Okay, as we've been delving into this whole question concerning whether Islam even existed in the 7th century, where it existed prior to 690, looking at Muhammad, looking at whether or not he was a Muslim, whether it was a religion called Islam, whether the Quran existed at that early, and also uh, whether the city of Mecca existed. There are people who are coming up and they're coming back and they're saying, well, hold on a minute, are you suggesting that there was none of this at all? And at the moment, I would say, yeah, there was no Mecca. I've already made that very clear years ago. Uh, that was something that I came across way back in 1994. So, goodness sakes, that was 25 years ago. I've been claiming and have stood, take, taken that position since I was much, much younger and had much, um, uh, not as much gray hair. So that hasn't changed. As far as the name Islam and the uh, the name Muslim, uh, that's something that I've come up with more recently uh, by looking at the research uh, that's coming out of this book. This is the uh, Seeing Islam as Other Sought by Dr. Dr. Robert Hoyland. Uh, looking at Ibn Warak's book here uh, on the quest for the historical Muhammad. This is a good book for you to read. If you don't have it, put it in your library. Uh, and that's that whole question of whether or not these uh, these people, this religion existed that early, that's something that I'm going to still haven't have to come to conclusions with, but I'm going to be doing videos on that. But when it comes to Muhammad, and this is the one I think that most people are you are concerned about, what about this man Muhammad? Here's a question that came up by Where T, and he asked this. You can't deny the man's existence. I'm doing a degree in history, and across all literature I've come across, Islamic and otherwise, he seems like a decent person. But whatever you think about him, you cannot deny his existence. Now, where T is confusing there, he's thinking that since he is a history major, it is coming across a very beautiful, nice narrative, very benign narrative of Muhammad. And I and he's thinking that therefore I'm uh, seeing another side of Muhammad. He therefore thinks that you can't at least deny his existence. That's not what I'm saying. And I can understand why where T as a historian, he's only coming across that narrative of Muhammad because that narrative of Muhammad is the narrative that the only narrative that you're going to be taught in schools today. And uh, where T, I don't know where you are. Uh, your name is where T, so I have no idea what you are or what your name's like or even what uh, country you come from. But what I would suggest that that every place, whether it's in Europe, whether it's the United States, whether it's in the West, or certainly in the Muslim world, every school... Uh, every university, uh, certainly even Bible schools and Christian colleges, are all they all speak with the same, uh, from the same brush. They all use the same paradigm, and that is Muhammad was a man of peace. Uh, I don't know of anywhere, of any school that teaches any other, and that's why it's fascinating to me uh, that the historical of Muhammad is not talked about. The historical Muhammad is where my interests lie. I'm not interested in the Muhammad of the traditions. I'm not interested of the Muhammad of the Sirah. I'm not interested of the Muhammad of the Tafsir or the Tahriq or the Muhammad, certainly, of the Hadith. That's not the Muhammad that interests me. And I've said that pretty clearly. And i said that's been very clear in much of what I've been using uh, or saying in this whole series. And that is, those are so late, they come not to, they, uh, they don't even are introduced until the 9th and 10th century. Therefore, I don't go to them. And I know because of that, Many of you are starting to come to this conclusion, I don't even think this man exists. Ergo, why? Where to even ask this question? Where to? Let me just say this very clearly. I'm not saying, though, and let me be on record here, I'm not saying he did not exist, okay? Are you following that? I don't think anywhere that I said he did not exist. I know there are some people that believe that he didn't exist. I know Robert Spencer, uh, where, did Muhammad exist? He asked that question very, uh, very uh Clearly, in this book, and the whole title is about that very question. That's not where I'm standing. I believe he probably did exist. Why? Because uh, there is the Doctrine of Iacobi from 634. There's also the Chronicles of Sabaeus from around 666, 70 that do refer to him by name. They're from sources outside of Islam, outside of the Arab world. These are Christian sources. And that's why it's clear to me that certainly the Christians in the 7th century knew this man, Muhammad. But that's not the Muhammad that I see in the traditions. And that's not the Muhammad that I see in the Quran. That's not the Muhammad that I see was introduced by Abdul Malik on the Dome of the Rock and the Protocols and also the coins. And so that's why it's the, the, it's the historical sources that I want to go to to answer this very question. Who is this real Muhammad? I'm not saying he didn't exist. I just don't think he's the Muhammad that the Muslims have been portraying. He's not the Muhammad the traditions tell us. He's not the Muhammad that 
uh, that is the Muhammad of history. That is the Muhammad of faith. That is the Muhammad of the later traditions. That is the version of Muhammad that they knew of in the 9th and 10th century, but not in the 7th century. That's why my interest for whether or not he existed in the 7th century, not that he existed, but is he the Muhammad of Islam? Is he is the Muhammad of faith? I hope that's very clear now, and I hope that clears that up at least. Let's move on to the other questions. Anyhow, having passed that one, let's bring this one to a conclusion, and let's get to the next question. This is Jay then, for now.